and uh, so so welcome everyone to our weekly call um hope you all had a, a lovely weekend uh, and uh, sort of a raring to go for the for the week ahead and unless you're in the states in which case you'll be raring to go for uh, at least one day off tomorrow but uh, that's good as well um if i just briefly share my screen just to remind you what uh, is on the uh, sort of agenda for today so as you should be aware uh, in a moment uh, peter lowe will uh, uh, sort of step in to uh, talk about the joy of text um uh, i think that uh, that well-known 70s uh, tome that he's just clearly updated um which should be fascinating um and then as always i'll sort of run through some of the recent uh, sort of headlines of which will be a, a few interesting ones over the last week or so uh, give you a reminder of forthcoming events etc uh, and then we'll sort of wrap up with any other business um if there's anything that you want to uh, discuss or highlight uh, be before we uh, finish the call so hopefully no surprises there um to anyone but with that let me uh, stop sharing um, and uh, s say welcome to Peter who uh, will have this uh, well polished uh, presentation he's been working on uh, uh, on, um, on the joy yeah. of text <laughs> so yeah, Peter let me just okay here we go uh, where's the right okay um, okay, so uh, first thing I'd like to say is uh, I am, I, I've said this before, but I am disproportionately proud of the pun of this, uh, the, the title of this presentation. Um, so um, I'll be making the most of that as I, as, as I can. Um, for anybody who doesn't know me, um, <clears throat> I think there's not many people on call, uh, but uh, yeah, my couple of plugs. I'm the DNS Abuse Ambassador for FIRST, which is the Forum of Incident Responders and Security Teams. So I go and talk about the work that FIRST is doing. And I'm also the co-chair of the DNS Abuse SIG there. Uh, so if anybody is interested in more about incident response and DNS abuse, then um, uh, hit me up and <clears throat> talk about that. I, I consider myself an accidental DNS person, um, a cybersecurity enthusiast, and a closet privacy amateur. Um, accidental DNS because you know, I never set out with trying to think. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do DNS. <laughs> I just kind of um, fell into it, and uh, yeah, have, have, haven't really stopped. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, um, here we go. Right. So the presentation is is all about TXT records or text records. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, well. There's an intro, obviously, which is this bit. Um, I'm going to um, the culinary. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, questions, questions at the end, Michael. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll talk a bit, a little about that, bit about the history of text records. There isn't that much. Um, a, a note on the, the formats of them, and uh, then some research that I did um, into uh, some text records and some of the results that I found, and some uh, obviously some thoughts at the end. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, I mean, text records, we all... Um, familiar with text records, but DNS itself is often thought about as uh, just domains to IPs. When you, when you explain DNS to your mom or your dad, uh, usually it's, you know, oh, when you go to uh, google.com, it really needs to contact an IP address behind the scenes and DNS looks up that IP address and, and that kind of thing. Um, it's often also called the address book of the internet, um, which is, I think, an excellent uh, um, analogy, but um, we know that there's a lot more than just translating domains to IPs. I, I went to go and find out how many different uh, resource record types there are, and uh, Wikipedia has 47 listed. I think some of those, might, that might be a bit off, so plus or minus. I didn't put too much effort into getting the exact number there. I probably should have been a bit more defined, but I only did this re re recently, so I should go and check. If anybody wants to correct me on that, feel free. Um, I'd love to update the slides. Most of the re resource record types in uh, the DNS are very well defined, um, <clears throat> but um, Text records are not really so much. Um, so I, I was, you know, thinking about text records, and I had some questions. Um, the uh, uh, the first thing I was wondering is, are text records really just arbitrary? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, is there any kind of patterns? Are there any anything that we can kind of, if I looked at a lot of them, would I would I find some deeper meanings about how people are using them? 
what are, what are people using the for? Like, I know that there's some common uses, but like, is there anything that I don't know about that I've never seen before or not interested? And and how can I find out uh, this? So decided to do a bit of research. Uh, yes, sir. textual history. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really reaching with these puns. So, uh, <laughs> um, okay, so the, the text, uh, record uh, resource record type was uh, defined in RFC 1035 um, in 1987. So quite a long time ago. And this is the, the you know, the daddy of the RFC, DNS RFCs, uh, domain names, implementation, and specification. The definition was fairly brief. And uh, the main thrust of it was descriptive text. That's pretty much it. Um, there's a, a couple of other sentences, but but that's that's what is the text records are defined as, and um, yeah, um, it it does note that the semantics of the text depends on the domain where it is found. So yeah, that's um, that's helpful. Thank you uh, very much. <laughs> um, this is actually not such a bad thing, but I'll talk about why it's not bad in, in later on. And I think it's turned out really well uh, to have this kind of um, rather vague definition. Uh, later on, there was um, a mention in, in 1993, so 30 years ago now, RFC 1464, which is uh, using the domain name system to store arbitrary arbitrary uh, string attributes, basically formalized using the text rec uh, DNS text records to have a key equals value uh, usage. Um, really, that's what that's the RFC. It's, it's basically, oh, you want to store some kind of configuration information in text records, you can do it by saying key equals value. Um, and it's, it's pretty simple. Sometimes um, I wonder about why RFCs are needed. They, they, they're very useful, but, and I'll show you why, because there's it's not just that simple. <laughs> this is um, going into a bit more details. They've got some examples about uh, how you can use key equals values and you know all these different kind of, um, uh, formats, well, variations are uh, examples of why you need to actually go into detail about this kind of thing. So that was excellent. The status of that RFC is still experimental. So um, I don't know if we're going to get that upgraded in the next 30 years or not, but um, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, <clears throat> the R text records are referenced in lots of other RFCs and lots of other definitions. Um, one big example is uh, RFC 7208, which is the Sender Policy Framework, or SPF. Um, well, most often it's used as a way of avoiding having to uh, define an entirely new resource record type. Um, so like, uh, you know, there, there's the lock, um, the location record uh, RR type, which is um, used for specific things, but there might be other um, places where it, it, like an RFC wants to implement a standard or, or a, uh, a way of doing things, but it needs somewhere to kind of store information. And that's really the most common use that I, I saw in all the different RFCs that it's mentioned. There's only three that actually mention text records in their uh, keywords. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's not like a highlight, but it's definitely something that is used quite, um, you know, all over the place really. So a, a quick note on, on uh, text format, uh, the, yeah, <clears throat> TXT formats. Um, most text records are simple character strings. That's what they're defined as in their character strings, uh, defined as in the RFC. Uh, so you can have, yeah, hi there, Mark. That's a, just a string enclosed by uh, quotes. Um, the You can also have multiple records, obviously. So uh, you can have lots of different text records. I don't think there's a limit defined, I mean, other than you know the absolute limit of uh, DNS records. There's no preference for this resource record type. So you can't specify the ordering uh, or anything like that. It's really just a kind of random list. Um, I think there is no specified behavior on how they should be returned, but I don't know. Uh, I haven't done any testing on different um, uh, name servers to see if there's any kind of behavioral difference there. Um, but you can also have multiple strings defined inside a single, uh, inside a single record. This is because of the definition of um, what a character string is in um, uh, in the RFC 1035, which is um, multiple or contiguous series of, actually, I think I have the definition come up here. Yeah. A character string is a, as a contiguous set of characters without interior spaces 
or as a string beginning with a double quote. And you can have multiple uh, in the um, the thing I left out at the beginning where it said, you know, descriptive text, which is that you can have one or more of those. Um, <clears throat> so I'm thinking about going back, back to this. Time. That doesn't necessarily have to be 11 or 12 or. Sorry, Alex, what was that? Sorry, I was talking to somebody else. Forgot oh, I was right, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought that was a question for me. Um, yeah, so so you can have multiple uh, double quote in, enclosed uh, character strings or, or you know, strings as a single record. So I wondered um, how are those character strings concatenated? If you have multiple ones, um, do you put spaces in between? If you do, you have them together. Is there you know, I don't know. Um, and um, I don't know. I didn't find the answer to this, uh, a definitive answer to this. But I did find something interesting in the SPF um, uh, reference, which was that, sorry. Um, so RFC 7208, the Sender Policy Framework, says that if you have multiple uh, strings defined, then they should be concatenated without spaces. Um, it mentions, it references RFC 1035, uh, and it gives examples of, uh, um, yeah. a, you know, it's equivalent to first, second strings, putting in um, basically the, the, the double quote enclosed strings together. Um, I can say, after having done this research, that many people seem to be unaware of this because there are a lot of SPF records out there without a preceding space um, after the first uh, double quote, which means that if you were to put them all together, then you would have very like a you know invalid IP addresses specified and, and things like that. Um, the RFC itself doesn't define explicitly whether this applies to all text records. I mean, it probably doesn't because it's to the uh, you know it's specific to the R SPF RFC, but. It is a bit ambiguous, and I asked this question on Macedon and Twitter, but you know, um, I got a really good discussion between Tony Finch, Patrick uh, Mevzek, and Haken Lindqvist, um, which discussed um, concatenation between character string sets, and uh, it was kind of fascinating, I have to say. I think the general conclusion was that, you know, um, what I said, that it was specific to the R SBF RFC, uh, but that still leaves the question of how are uh, how should you concatenate um, TXC records which have multiple character strings in quotes in, in double quotes, uh, in closing double quotes? Uh, um, Peter, yeah. given Ma Michael's raised his hand. I don't know if it was specifically relevant to concatenation oh. and whether it'd be useful to yeah, Michael sure. come in in case it was. So back 20 years ago when we did RFC uh, 4332, which is um, opportunistic encryption with IPsec, and we put our keys in uh, text records in the reverse zone. Um, and so the keys are always, typically RSA keys are longer than one of those strings allows you to put in. So you always ah. had more than one string, right? And yeah. uh, we, we discovered some bugs at the time in the bind zone file reading, where there was interesting ways which you could confuse it into thinking that the subsequent lines were not part of the first line. Uh, they were subtle but silly, and I think they got fixed very quickly. Um, but oh. but yeah, we did we did exactly ha have to deal with the issue that you just said, which is that we did not expect spaces when yeah. things were concatenated, okay, yeah. and that was fine. However, there were people that put them in thinking that they belonged, yeah, right, and so we had to fix our base sixty four decoder library essentially to ignore extraneous spaces oh, wow. while parsing it and uh yeah and i remember <laughs> people said oh it's just a disaster you need your own re resource record and we got <laughs> one but that was you know that was a little <laughs> late for the project so That's anyway excellent. so everything you're discovering here it's like been a pain in the ass for <laughs> ever right yeah um i th this is i it was a great little uh rabbit hole to go down and yeah thank you for that michael i love that story um I th i'd love to, maybe if i do this again i'll ask you and, and put this in put that story in this uh presentation um <clears throat> i i what well, was i was wondering myself does it should there be spaces or not and then i saw that akabai.net one of the biggest uh dns providers in the world have and I think this I've seen this again in other domains. So I think it's some kind of default. The descriptive text for Akamai.net is this is not the name server you're looking for, which 
in SBF world would and uh, 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 <laughs> in Michael's world would be this is not the names over you're looking for, I think. But um, yeah, so definitely some people there, there's some ambiguity here. Um, right. So what did I actually do? Um, right. Here's my methodology. I wanted a pretty basic shell script that could check text records on a, a given domain set. I wanted the uh, yeah. So this is what I decided to go and check a whole bunch of domains and, and have a look at them. Um, I wanted the output to be human readable, so that I could look through it myself. But I also needed it to be computer readable, so that I could run uh, some scripts on it and get some stats. Um, this ended up taking about uh, forty eight hours to run on a top one million domain list. Um, which obviously was multiple days because uh, to even get started because I had the usual stuff that you run into when running shell scripts or running scripts, um, timeouts, network hanging, uh, typos in my scripts and forgetting to include the output, uh, text in the output and the results. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, anybody who's done this kind of stuff is familiar with these kind of um, challenges. But um, got there in the end and it's pretty simple. It just inputs a domains.txt file. Uh, and outputs stuff uh, like this. And the magic, I use the host command. I know a lot, most people are familiar with dig, but host to me is the is the, the first, one of the first commands I was ever shown on a Unix machine and uh, Unix-like machine. And uh, I've it's stuck with me ever since, so yeah. Uh, but minus, minus W5 gives it a sub five second timeout, which was kind of like a magic thing for me, which fixed a lot of my problems. There's lots of weird hanging going on when you check a million domains uh, from the command line. The output looks like this. It's very basic, um, but it's it's you know well defined enough to be able to to um, pass into something interesting. Uh, I originally for the source data, the list of domains, I'd originally used the Tranco list, uh, which is a kind of a top domains list which has been hardened and it's got this you know a lot of um, false positive well false positives but like junk data and stuff removed. Um, but the results were really boring. There wasn't that many, as many text records as I was hoping. Uh, it was kind of bland. I think this is because it's basically all parent domains, which is sometimes called effective second level domain or second level domain. Uh, but basically, the, the when you register a domain, those uh, ones, none of the like subdomains or host names. Um, so I tried again with the Cisco top one million, um, also known as the uh, popular domains or something like that. Um, and uh, it was generated on March the 13th, and this uh, was much more interesting. So the output log file was 209 meg raw and uh, 41 meg bzipped. Um, so I, what I did was I, I, I took this and I generated a whole bunch of intermediate files. Like I, first of all, uh, grepped through it and, and put all the um, SPF records in one file. I grepped and then put all the domain verifications in one another file, and then I look for anything with certain lengths and stuff like that. But then I realized that this is just painful. I mean, it's fun playing on my line, uh, you know, with Greg and said, and this, I feel quite, um, it, you know, putting together complex piped commands to get some nice output is is pleasurable activity for me. Um, but yeah, eventually I just put it in an SQLite database, which I really should have done first. And to do that, despite around, 20 years of experience as a PHP developer, I asked ChatGPT to write the script for me. And um, it didn't do badly, I'd say. Side note, complete, complete side note, but um, it was interesting. I'm glad I have that experience as a developer because I had to fix the script. But um, yeah, it was it did a lot of the donkey work for me. So that was interesting. Um, I Yeah, I've uploaded everything to GitHub with a CC0 license, basically public domain. Um, I think if you go and have a look at the, there'll be a list of uh, links to everything at, at the end if anybody's interested in looking at this, including the SQLite database itself. So you can, it's really just the domain and text record. So um, it's a many to one relationship. So um, each domain can have multiple text records associated. There's no indexes or anything. And um, yeah, um, but the data is there if anybody wants to have a look. Um, yes, so this is what the GitHub repository looks like. You can see a bunch of text records in there, KB records, length counts, lengths.txt. This is before I just put it all in uh, the SQLite database and um, uh, <laughs> it started writing SQL queries instead. Um, but I figured, hey, why not? I've done the work, put it up there. If anybody finds it interesting, why not? Um, 
Okay, so here's what I found. Text by numbers. Um, there were in total 765,650 text records uh, of which uh, 595,000 were unique. Um, and out of all the domains, there was, I think only 584,000 domains with text records. So um, I was a little bit lower than I expected to be honest which meant there was 415,000 domains without a text record associated, which um, seems quite surprising to me, but it might be to do with the fact that there were more subdomains mixed in there, which might have not have um, you know, any use for them at all. Um, <clears throat> this makes an average of 0.5 text records per domain or one text record per domain that has any. Um, yeah, fascinating averages there, as you can see. Um, <laughs> this was more fun, the total, characters in all the text records is 49,800,000-ish. So around 50 megs worth of um, just tech characters. The average uh, length was 65 characters, which I think was, uh, you know, a, a bit longer than I, than I would have expected, I'll be honest, but um, given the, the nature of a lot of these, um, it's not that surprising. So the longest text record was for q.amazonaws.com. And it's still, I don't check the exact length of it now, but it's still very long. It's um, 7,800, 7.8K of, of just DNS records. Yeah, the, the second longest, well, this is like multiple uh, like strings um, closed by quotes. The second longest was 5.4K uh, or 5.5K. And then the third longest, ntn.com, uh, was also 5.4K. Five, uh, 5 so pretty, pretty close uh, behind that. I think the next one was about four and it, it obviously tails off, uh, but pretty, pretty big. I mean, I'm quite sort of surprised that Amazon AWS has such a um, massive single text record because it doesn't seem like good practice to me. And I think there's probably a lot of wasted bandwidth, but hey, I suppose when you're Amazon size, um, maybe that's not a concern. Mm -hmm. um, I keep on having to do select this. Okay. Um, yeah, so there were 164,000 odd SPF1 records, um, which was a big number, um, but it, it goes to show how commonly used SPF is. So out of the uh, half a million odd, uh, there were, that's, that's a big chunk of all the text records that were there. I probably should have put a percentage in there, sorry. Um, yeah, but 8,444 8, 8, were just V equals SPF1 minus all. <laughs> There was also 5,000 SPF2 records, 5,091, and 880, uh, 808 SPF3 records, which, which is new to me. So maybe some people experimenting or some typos, I don't know. Or something I, I'm not aware of yet, which is entirely possible. Um, key value, though, there, there's, this is the big chunk of it. And you can see why RFC 1464 was created because 630,000 of the uh, records that I saw were key was value records. There was there was an equal in there somewhere. Um, and of those, 402,000 seemed to be domain verifications. Domain verifications were by far the most common usage of um, uh, of text records. I mean, it was it's astonishing really how many were. If you guys haven't seen the uh, email update from Andrew today that he sends out uh, to the mailing list. Uh, there is a really interesting uh, link to a uh, well, article about uh, some efforts by Siobhan, uh, I've got his own name, sorry, Siobhan Sahib, um, uh, by some work that the ITF are doing with Shuman Hook, Paul and Paul Walters uh, about best practices for using DNS for domain verifications. And uh, they've got some really sound advice. So I came across it before and it's, it's good stuff. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people doing it differently at the moment, as you can see here. Uh, there was 183 empty records, just literally double quotes, double quotes, um, and 12 with just spaces in them. Yeah, and the 803 SPF3 records, which I still sort of find funny. I, I hope I'm not missing something there, but it seems, I don't know. Um, oh, thank you, Andrew. Yes, that's, that's the one. Um, so uh, of the domain verifications, Google was, again, uh, well, unsurprisingly, the, the, the most popular there. They do, they do host a lot of the stuff out there. Uh, so, and again, I might be missing some of them. I did try and look for the, um, 
uh, all the different styles of uh, test records which are used as domain verifications, because there's there's lots of different ones. There's like, as you can see, Global Sign, Apple, Docker, LogMeIn. There's like tons of like, all these random services using DNS, and they all have slightly different ways about putting um, the format of, of putting it in. So Google Site Verification equals something, and then there's MS, which I think is Microsoft. I'm, I'm not really a big Microsoft user, so I don't know exactly what that's for, but I'm guessing it's a Microsoft, um, or maybe Azure or something like that. Um, I'm sure someone here would know. Uh, and then like Facebook domain verification. So they have a Google site and Facebook domain, all those words are slightly different. I think I think I have the total here correct, that 402,000, but I might be missing some because there might be some more obscure uh, methods out there. But yeah, tons. Um, and um, I've got uh, just a lot of Google records <laughs> from the top one million. Um, interesting for me was the fixed length records that I found out there. I, I was expecting to find more evidence of um, the DNS tunneling, basically. Um, and there were, I think, quite a bit, uh, maybe not more evidence, but um, so uh, 68 characters, there was 170,000, uh, which was uh, Google verifications, um, 171,000 roughly. There's 13 characters, fixed length records, which were MS equal ones. Uh, the Facebook one, which is 59 characters, much longer, is um, 33,000. But there were uh, anything at 32 characters. Um, there's 48,000 entries, uh, text records like that were exactly 32 characters. And most of them were just random strings looking at them. There obviously were a few which were accidentally 32 characters, but most of them were just like, you know, basic, it looks like base 64 encoded uh, kind of style text and 26 characters as well. Um, and I think this is clearly some kind of encoding some embedding of data there somehow. I um, would need to look into more about how this works exactly. I have, you know, looked into all the, a lot of different kinds of ways that people use the DNS. Um, uh, but it, it, I, I'm curious about exactly what these things are used for or how to find out, you know, but it was an interesting discovery. Um, yeah, there was 708 URLs that I could find, 16 of which were non-HTTP, um, around 4,500 email addresses. There was three Hello Worlds, which was um, interesting. Uh, I think from the top 1 million, that's not too surprising. Um, there was uh, 14 other sort of miscellaneous greetings like hey and hi and uh, things like that. Um, there were zero swear words. I was very disappointed. I thought there would be a lot more swearing in uh, text records. Um, I've done this before with a different data set and found a few. So I'm, yeah, we'll see. I'll have to try again. There was one script tag. I thought it might be more attempts to use text records as a kind of weird vector for attacking uh, people. Um, I'm sure it would actually be quite effective as well, because I mean, who would think to um, encode the output of a text record? Um, 225 embedded DNS records. <laughs> I mean. I might be missing something here, but I think it's just a typo in a zone file where you know you can see the text record itself said so in Adra, and then something. There was twenty seven say please, um, and twenty eight references to uh, ticketing systems. So I think uh, yeah, maybe domains that have been taken over or, or not taken over. I, I'm not sure exactly. Um, yeah. So just some final thoughts. Obviously, as I've said, key value is used a lot, and it's definitely the main use of the. Uh, TXT records. It's still not overwhelming. It's not like the only use by any means. Um, but um, I, I, it makes me glad that the RFC exists because we now have a reference that, to, that says this is how you should do key value stuff, which is um, just just brilliant, really. Domain verifications it, it, to me it was surprisingly high. Like I. Again, from a different data set, we might get a different results. Uh, from, this is a top one million. So th there's, these are popular domains, um, and they probably have more of a need to verify themselves in things like you know, hosting services in the cloud than, um, than your, uh, your home network. But um, it was still high I, to me, I thought. And yeah, and SBF's not far behind, which is great to see. You know, uh, Although, obviously, we'd want every domain to be uh, SBF well. Maybe. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, lots and lots of seemingly random records. Um, this is one thing I'd like to look into further, really, to be honest, um, and, and might do at some point in the future. Um, yeah, but overall, text records really are used for, oops, sorry, anything and everything, which I think is excellent. I, I think I some examples that you can use uh, text records for a config store as a notes field. 
a playground for a new standard, or even the basis of file storage, although that's obviously not recommended, um, and has helped with the development of new standards, as Michael um, Michael talked about earlier, which is uh, brilliant. I think that's what they should be used for. I think every every kind of standard should have a, a, a kick around area to kind of play with things, a notes field uh, almost. Um, obviously not being used as a notes field a lot of the time, but um, the fact that it can be is, I think, wonderful and quite representative of the DNS as a whole, and, and I, I love it. And some stuff I'd like to do in the future, maybe. I don't have access to these kind of data sets anymore, but um, at the moment, um, but I would like to use a more kind of stream of consciousness data set. So basically just pick, I don't know, uh, some a random time period or pick random domains, and top, random one million random queries from a, from a day's uh, worth of DNS requests or something like that. Have a closer look into the random strings side of things. Um, try and figure out what they've been actually specifically being used for. I think there's ways to do this if you took a domain that had a lot of them um, and then looked at where that domain's being referenced elsewhere and work the, from the other side. Yeah, and approach it from the other side. So start with examples of tunneling and then look for specific um, domains which are doing that. So look for a kind of a way that you know it's being used and then see if you can find examples of domains which are doing that and then other domains which are doing it and see how prevalent that kind of thing is. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a fun little research project. Um, if anybody's interested in any of the links that I put in the presentation, uh, I put a link here. I will also share a link to this presentation in the chat, and um, Andrew can forward it on. Um, but uh, I found it very interesting, and uh, thanks for listening. Marvelous, thanks, uh, Peter. Uh yeah, uh, some interesting twists and turns there, and uh, yeah, perfect timing with that uh, report catching my eye today uh, on the yeah. DNS verification, uh, which sort of tied in really rather rather nicely. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, does anyone have any comments or questions? And if you do, uh, use the Zoom tool, raise your virtual hand, or pop something in the chat if that's easier. But any thoughts or questions? Uh, Gratefully received. And whilst people are thinking, and just wondering whether this might be a topic for further exploration, perhaps maybe discuss it with the DNS uh, Research Federation, perhaps, uh, Peter. Has... They, yeah, I actually, I, I had crossed my mind to speak to them about, I think, I, I'm, I forget, it was like a little while ago that I looked at their platform, uh, but it was very impressive. But I don't know if they have data sets which they would let me look at, um, which are like, I don't know, publicly available or, or available to researchers or anything like that. Um, as I said, I don't have a corporate sponsor at the moment, so, but they did say very kindly that they would um, let me keep my access to it. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the DNS area. Um, and they've done some fun things. Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I'm quite glad there are no questions. <laughs> yeah. um, it's uh, yeah, but uh, thanks for listening, guys. I hope it was fun. Well, to be fair, Peter, I've given you a health warning at the beginning that this wasn't polished. It seems <laughs> polished. So uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you obviously sort of did the sort of politician's trick of setting low expectations and then exceeding them, which is uh, a, <laughs> a clever thing. Uh, that, that happens, <laughs> but, <sorry. laughs> Well, no, to be fair, I, I've been planning to do this for ages, and it's been on the every week I've been getting this. Ah, oh, I'm, I'm doing the encrypted uh, DNS weekly call and seeing my name come up in, in your emails and like, oh, I've got to get around to putting those slides together. Um, yeah. This was, by the way, I didn't mention at the beginning, this was originally published as an article on Bright Labs, um, which, uh, which is where a lot of the content came from. <laughs> I've added a few extra bits in, but... Um, but yeah, that, that was, uh, so I didn't have to think too hard about it. Um, but um, yeah, actually doing the, the slides stuff is something I procrastinated on for too far too long. <laughs> was it about uh, deadlines and if it wasn't for the last minute, nothing would ever get done? Uh... Yeah, right. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. yeah brilliant. All right. Well, if anyone sort of thinks of any questions as we roll through the rest, then uh, yeah, obviously just pop pop them in the chat. But uh, in the meantime, thank you, Peter. And I see you've already put the link to the slides in the chat as well, which for anyone that's watching the uh, uh, recording, you'll find those on the uh, that link also on the web page um, as well. Thanks, Andrew. Right. Okay. Let me uh, go back.
bit to my slides then, so I'll just reshare my screen. So um, it was yeah, really interesting presentation. Uh, I'm a perhaps topic that's not given so much airtime. Um, all right, let's just look at some of the um, uh, recent developments. And as always, you'll find these in the weekly uh, headlines email. I won't go through them all on the call, but just call out some that especially caught my eye. Um, first one um, being the uh, uh, open letter from Vint Cerf, members of the IB and a whole bunch of other people. That's an uh, open letter to the French Assembly and the uh, French Senate. Um, just raising some concerns about the negative impact of some draft legislation that's currently working its way through the uh, French uh, legislative legislative uh, anyway the French Parliament uh, go with that um, uh, which amongst other things and it, and it is far more wide ranging than this does include a requirement for browsers and DNS resolvers to block access to certain domains, um, I, I think they envisage, for example, uh, where, where they're known to contain uh, malware. Um, and the, the letter raises concerns why that would be a bad thing for the open internet. Um, not, not so much bl blocking access to uh, malware, malicious content being bad, but uh, that because it's it would have global impact if, if you look at the legislation um, then potentially other um, countries are, uh, could abuse that same process and demand um, other um, uh, content is blocked as, as well as an alternative i think in the letter it suggests maybe using isps for blocking but of course the flaw in that is um open resolvers and and uh and others would easily circumvent that blocking uh, in france so um anyway uh it follows on nicely from the uh discussion that we had a few weeks back with our mini panel with uh um uh paul vixie um uh, John Todd and uh, Vittorio Batola just talk about some of the uh, sort of um, Im implications of uh, mandated uh, blocking. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to that just uh, in the web page as, as, as well for anyone that wants to just uh, have a look back at that discussion. Um, second on the screen, um, the uh, Ferry Sign has launched a new initiative. Um, uh, uh, dnib.com um which i was looking at um so just before the, the, the call it looks like an interesting initiative um so on the back of discussions in ICANN about um dns abuse um it, it, it would appear i don't know if anyone on the call may well um have um more insight into that uh th 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 than me um but uh uh, yeah, interesting initiative uh, just just started, um, and you can go to the uh, dnib.com for for more information um, on that. Um, I, I, I can see as I've been talking, uh, Philippe has helpfully put in the chat um, uh, a reference to the fact that there's. Uh, the, 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 oh, Vint Cerf will, 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 will give a, uh, a closing keynote at the French IGF on Thursday, which should be uh, very timely. Um, I think we can probably guess what uh, topic he may well focus on, probably broadening out to internet fragmentation in some way, I suspect. Um, uh, just the other one I'll call out on, the, on this screen, um, just there's sort of further information on the uh, uh, so-called e Ethereum name service, ENS, um, as that continues to develop, which I, I put in principally because there was a presentation at the last ITF meeting um, for, uh, on uh, uh, ENS, um, where one of the... Uh, one of the guys that was given the presentation um, sort of announced that DNS was obsolete technology that ENS was, was taking over from, so which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, so I so put just put this link in there so you can see how ENS uh, is evolving, um, and also in a rather timely manner, um, DNS research presentation, uh, sorry, research federation even, um, um, whilst they were in. 
um, Washington, I think last week, um, and they had a, a conversation after a round table. Uh, uh, they had a conversation with Drew Bagley of CrowdStrike um, on blockchain domains. So not, not Ethereum specific, but uh, uh, I'll put a link to that there as, as well. There's certainly in my head there, sort of pretty proximate uh, um, subject matter. Um, and, then, and then further uh, on the uh, headlines, uh, um, uh, we've already referenced the one on the top of this screen, um, the uh, article in uh, the APNIC uh, blog um, on domain verification using um, DNS, which uh, sort of Peter referenced earlier. So uh, that's on the APNIC blog uh, if you're interested. Um, uh, and, and then just be, again below that, uh, also Jan uh, uh, Paolo um, from uh, Vodafone posted uh, a, a link to his presentation uh, on extended DNS errors. Uh, again, a topic which he covered at the last um, uh, ITF meeting, um, just to update people on progress with the uh, extended DNS error uh, draft. Um, which is uh, still working its way through. I think it's it, if I recall, the uh, the, the Deprive um, uh, working group. Um, and then there are sort of various other things uh, happening. So you, you can see a few there. And then just more broadly, um, I just put, put, put a few links to, again, other things which uh, caught my eye. Um, well, sort of slightly broader uh, subject matter. Uh, various things, uh, a couple on uh, US uh, regulatory um, developments, um, and then bottom one, um, always worth a look, uh, just uh, see uh, the, the latest on uh, quantum su supercomputer development, just uh, sort of suggesting that Microsoft is making um, progress in that space um, through their R&D. Um, I think it, it suggests that they should have functional supercomputer capabilities certainly within the decade um so, although i think it generally seems to be roughly 12 years hence sorry 10 years hence uh for for, for quantum computing uh, irrespective of the uh, time period where when somebody gives the uh, uh gives the forecast it's only been around 10 years for the last few years but that still seems to be holding true um in terms of uh, requests uh, for papers, um, uh, uh, the one, one I call out on the screen now is the DNS uh, Research Federation are asking for uh, proposals. If effectively, this is uh, f basically proposals for future research uh, for, for which some funding is available. So if that's of interest, click on the link um, for, for more information um, on that. Um, and then obviously below that, uh, UK NOF coming up in uh, September, I think is the end of September, and that's also the deadline for uh, presentations to be submitted. Um, in terms of forthcoming events, uh, unsurprisingly, uh, San Francisco ITF 117 is coming up. A uh, reminder that uh, next Monday is the cutoff for any uh, internet draft submissions um, before the uh, data track closes down until the start of the uh, meeting. Um, also next Monday, I think 23. 59 UTC to be precise uh, is also the cutoff for standard rate registrations so if you haven't registered to attend either in person or remotely and propose to do so you'll save a little money by doing so um, before um, sort of uh, 2359 UTC next Monday um, after which it uh, bumps up the price uh, again um, and then after that we sort of the gap in August and then uh, first week of September, um, uh, we, we've got that block of uh, three uh, events all in uh, uh, Vietnam, um, actually one of which is not listed, which I'll add to this, which is um, on 3rd September is the, uh, is on DNS abuse, 4th and 5th is the ICANN DNS Symposium, sorry, uh, 4th of September rather is DNS abuse, 5th is the DNS uh, Symposium, and then 6th and 7th is OARC. Uh, 41 um, all back to back um, in Da Nang in Vietnam. And, right um, and then lastly from me just uh, 
uh, reminder of topics for the next few weeks. Uh, next Monday, um, uh, Andre Meshkov, the CTO of AdGuard, will join us to uh, just share some of his experiences adding support for uh, encrypted client hello um, within the sort of various um, uh, AdGuard um, sort of, uh, clients etc so we'll sort of share uh, any learnings um, from that um, and then uh, I've added to the dates TBA list um, a, a topic which I'll, I'll schedule hopefully by next week which is uh, uh, um, on reputation assessment and threat feeds looking at DNS and IP reputation assessment um, let's, uh, have a presentation on that on that to add to the uh, list so watch this space for that to be confirmed and i think that's pretty much it for me so we're on any of the business so let me stop sharing um and see if uh, if there's anything else that anyone wants to raise looks like peter does so uh, anyone else yeah. raise your hand like peter pop it in the chat or, or just unmute and call out when no one else is speaking but peter first to you yeah, I was. Get, I have a request. Um, talking about the ENS domains, uh, I love the fact that they said that um, DNS is obsolete technology. Um, I would love it if you could get someone to come and talk about ENS domains and Ethereum and, and that. Um, I find it a fascinating topic personally. I was initially very skeptical about it. I'm like, oh, that'll never work. And I think that's most people's opinions uh, that I've come across. But I, I, something was pointed out to me recently, which is that um, that the standards that we're running the internet on today were written by people who aren't going to be around in 20 years. And the people who are talking about ENS domains will be. So it sort of almost doesn't matter if we're right or wrong, because <laughs> we might not be around to argue much longer. Um, so I don't know. It was. A, um, I think it's good to see innovation in any form. Yeah. But um, I'd, okay. I'd yeah, well, love to have someone come on and tell us about the current state. That's a good shout. I will look up and see if I can find who it was that, 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 that uh, in the ITF, I think it was in DNS Ops, I think. I wouldn't swear to that. I might be misremembering. But wherever it was uh, in, in the, in, in, at the ITF uh, meeting, you know, said in the room about DNS being ob obsolete technology, which I thought was quite a, a bullish stance to take in that particular <laughs> forum. I was quite impressed that someone actually said um, that. There, there was a really interesting and energetic guy from I can set the AGM, uh, was it 78, last year, 56? I don't know. The AGM in, in Kuala Lumpur last year, he, he came on and talked about Ethereum and uh, things, yeah, they were a little bit over my head, but um, it was, uh, I'll see if I can find his name and send it to you. Okay. Uh, but yeah, good shout. Uh, certainly do that. I would number myself as one of the skeptics of uh, distributed ledger. I'm not convinced there's a problem it needs to solve but uh maybe we'll have that discussion uh if, if we find someone who's more knowledgeable to actually talk about the subject uh, um, yeah uh, anyway okay yeah uh, good, good call peter um anyone else with anything else that you want to raise this week your chance to unmute and say so um, or as i say pop something in the chat uh, I don't think we got anyone on the call this week from um, very sign, which is a shame. Otherwise, I would have asked about their um, new initiative. Maybe that's something we'll catch up with um, next week um, if anyone is on and time permits. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Not seeing any hands raised. So, okay, I think I think we're done. So, Peter, thanks again for uh, a very interesting presentation. Um, um, really useful. So good, good to see that. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Have a fantastic week. Um, happy Independence Day for anyone from uh, the uh, US. Uh, have a great day off tomorrow at least. Um, and uh, yeah, catch up with everyone uh, next week. So see you all then. Bye everyone. Bye.